Good morning, good afternoon, good evening all over the world. Dobson 777A here. So I did a video last night for the uh, members and that's another benefit of the members is you get information in advance but uh, there's some information I'm going to repeat in this video because I think it's critical for you as even subscribers to know that something is very likely about to happen. And so right now, uh, I was just looking at the market this morning and uh, gold is already up 0.78, silver's 0.66, and platinum's up 1.67. And when we look at the uh, gold and silver charts, we got a little bit of a jump going here, nothing to speak about, but this is still something that, uh, that um, it, it's nice to see. So we'll just have to see if this keeps going. So let me show you what else is happening. So the stock market and sector performance, yesterday the NASDAQ was down like 4%, S&P was down 2%, but today we got some green shoots going and part of it is oil was up this morning. Um, in fact, you can see Asia Pacific's the only thing that's down right now. I wonder if I can get oil on here. Let me see. It's showing negative this morning, but actually no, it's showing up 0.92. Uh, so just a little bit up, but the, I saw some headlines this morning saying such. So here's the sector performance now. Everything's green here. I haven't done some charts in a while, and there's a reason why. Things don't happen. It's like uh, grass growing, or you might see a little bit of chinch bugs or something in there, and then all of a sudden things happen. So I've been watching this carefully, and I always try to give you a heads up just before I think something is going to snap. So here is gold, the chart, what it looks like. And you can see we were back August 7th was the peak and you can see how far we've come down. And then here is a pennant. This is a pennant. So you have the flagpole here and then you have the potential breakout that it will have on this end. And it's usually when you get about 75 to 80% in this triangle, that's when this thing takes off. So it's kind of looking like gold is at that point where this could happen. Now, let me show you. This is what it looks like. So you have this pennant and a breakout. In fact, if I go back and change this, uh, this would actually be down here a little bit farther. So this could go a little bit farther here, but this is looking like we could be up to nearly 2,200 bucks when this thing finishes its breakout. So gold is very likely heading to roughly 2,200, maybe a little more, uh, possibly 2,300 or something. We'll see. Uh, but this is just ballpark appearance. So hopefully you can see this pattern. This is a common pattern that we've seen over and over again, the way this thing works. And this thing will take off and be phenomenal when this uh, goes. So now uh, you're probably like, well, where's my silver? All right, do a funny voice for you. In fact, this would change. This would come all the way down to that point. But again, I took it from the bottom of this point here and all he did was copy it over. So this is saying that uh, silver is going to break out and it's probably not quite ready here. Silver's probably got to come a little bit farther in here, maybe a, maybe a few more weeks and then it's going to break potentially above $35. Now it's not going to be overnight. It's going to take uh, probably a couple months, but that's the indication of where a uh, similar pennant formation um, where the value will go. And I mean, this could be pushing $40 even. So this is charting folks. And I tell you that we've done this over and over again. I've shown you over and over again, how this works, but, uh, we are getting close for where this is going to, uh, break again. And I don't know if it's just because I'm hearing hints that we're going to go with some more stimulus, but it looks like it's building up like it's about to blow again. And that's, that's a huge jump when that does that. So think about it, how that's going to uh, potentially make your pockets feel a little heavier if you're holding the silver and gold right now. I'll go look at uh, platinum on another day. I didn't want to belabor this, but I just wanted to show you. I think we're, we're getting really close here. All right, so it's right around 11 o'clock today. Um, this is Wednesday. Got to look over here. I'm retired. I don't know what these days are. It is the 9th of September. Gold is up 0.78% right now. This is the uh, uh, ETF representation of the physical and it's up almost 28% for the year. Platinum's up 1.9 today and down uh, nearly 5% for the year. Silver's up 1% and it's up uh, nearly 50% for the year. When we move over to the uh, ETF miners, uh, it's up 2.82 today 
And it looks like the large gold miners are getting the, uh, the money today with uh, junior gold and then moving into uh, large silver miners. So right now, um, <coughs> large silver miners ahead of gold right now, but gold has been leading pretty much the whole year. So 39.5% return for the ETF miners, which is nothing to sneeze at for a year to date. We're not even through the year yet. Now let's talk about this because I had somebody complaining. They're like, you haven't changed anything in the portfolio since uh, I think it was February when I, when I added a bunch of positions. And I, I kind of commented, I said, you know, we're up like 40%. What is it that you think is going to happen? I mean, I could go churn stuff and more than likely we can make it worse, but you don't mess with something when it's doing well. In fact, the things that I added, let's go look at some of these. All right, CXBMF was one that I added, up 98.37%. That's humongous. Uh, SBSW has crawled out of the uh, basement. It's up 42%. Um, ELYGF, 48%. Now, MMX was one of those micro um, royalty companies, and uh, we knew that was going to be a very risky one. We didn't put you know, too much in here, but it, it hasn't quite broken out yet. Sand is up 27%, wheat and precious metals 74%. But anyways, overall 38.38%. I would not be holding a First Majestic in here, but this was like a, call it a fan favorite. So we've got that in there. You know, AUI was a fan favorite, 52.27. Um, Kirkland Lakes dug itself out of the hole and it's up 17% and it's just going to do better and better now that people are getting used to that acquisition that they did. So anyways, even VNNHF, we picked that up last year, but this is year to date performance, 88% for the year. Everybody keeps sending me stuff where their advisors are saying, you better unload VNNHF. And every time they do, they send it to me. It's like, every time you do that, it jumps up like another 25%. So Please, guys, keep selling your VNNHF because it's making me rich. I love it. All right, so um, at this point in time, I make no apologies for this portfolio. This has actually held up very well. And again, it's balanced. We're not, there's a methodology to this madness. If you study the allocations, you will see, again, it's 80% gold, 20% silver. But I put a heavy weight on the royalties and I put a heavy weight on the uh, ETF uh, miners uh, to kind of give this thing some ballast. And so this thing has been outperforming the basic ETF portfolio, which, which is not doing bad by itself. This is up 35.7. This is 38.38. When both of the, when, you know, gold and silver really start taking off, this thing's going to go up faster. But this is still probably, you know, 50% of this portfolio up here when you look at what's inside here. My portfolio is a mixture of John's portfolio as well as some of the uh, things that we picked up in February that I put in, in here as well. And uh, my portfolio is up 47%, but mine is also from, this isn't a year to date. This is from August when I had set up this portfolio with some new additions in February. So anyways, um, I, don't, I don't understand the complaint this is not a trading service. I invest. I do not trade. Uh, just like would you go be buying and selling your physical gold? No, you don't do it. You're on the right side of the trade. You let it ride. Now, if you have dry powder, I've talked about over and over again, you know, buy this stuff on the dip because, man, we saw at least two major times where VNNHF got smacked down on like rumors and stuff, and you got to pick that thing up cheap. And I know uh, some folks that did, and they are ecstatic. So the same thing with any of these that you see on the list, watch them. Watch them like crazy. I try to pick them up myself when something happens. But um, right now, this is just to give you some guidance. And you can look at how this designed and go potentially design your own. And remember, some of these are front-running John's uh, picks. There are things that are in his top 50 list, and I said, these look kind of interesting, and it has paid off tremendously. And if we're lucky, if we're really lucky, John may end up telling his subscribers to go buy these, and we're already in. We're going to get an immediate double from there. So there's, there's something going on here you don't see or don't know or don't remember, but I talk about this periodically, 
and that's the fact that we're getting and it's not only john's portfolio i have access to some other things on stansbury that i picked up some of these positions and they paid off handsomely so keep an eye on the portfolios you're not going to make money moving in and out of this stuff because we we just don't have the crystal ball there's somebody behind the curtain that's making these things do what they do and just get early get in early and that's that's what i've tried to do and you're just going to be so happy um, the way this is going to work all right so uh, i'm going to go see if there's some news out there we'll add that on the end of this so i was just reading this article about uh, cryptocurrencies rarely used to uh, launder money fiat is preferred and uh, yeah these kind of reports always come out when they're going to try to just you know remove the currency um, but I found this uh, kind of curious because, you know, you hear people saying that the cryptos is uh, where the money laundering is occurring. But in fact, uh, cold hard cash is still the, the preferred method. What was, uh, well, they're looking at it. it's an upcoming threat, uh, cryptocurrencies. But I thought this was interesting when I got all the way, way to the end down here. How many people have heard of uh, mix, mixers and tumblers? These are online tools that mix up cryptocurrency transactions with legitimate transactions to cover their tracks. They also represent an upcoming threat. Similar to these is the rise of privacy-centric cryptocurrencies like Monero, with, which obfuscate transactional addresses and are hence difficult to track. And then there's a emergence of specialized online marketplaces that only require an email address to sign up, which could then be used to convert illegal crypto gains to real world assets like property watches swift added but for now the real problems lie with fiat currency so that's really uh i had never heard of this any of you guys heard of uh, monero and a couple other things um it kind of reminds me of using like a vpn you know that they uh, that they can hide where they're at and they're they're doing it with the cryptos so that's uh, kind of tricky dicky stuff going on all right i think that's it for the report today I hope everybody's treating you well. I hope you're doing well. Do the best you can. God bless.